Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, we have a rare discussing news in the moment video. Uh, but this is one that I just feel like there's a lot of um, thoughts to, a lot of emotions in it from a lot of people. Uh, and that is the fact that F1 denied Andretti's addition into F1 as the 11th team. Uh, now, F1's I've had a lot of pushback too. A lot of the teams have had a pushback to it. Uh, but fans in the FIA have been definitely on the side of, sure, let's have this team. I mean, the FIA is the one that said we're looking into another team and picked Andretti. Um, Andretti's been campaigning for a few years. I mean, I remember it was Miami, I think it was 2022. They were there for the first race saying, hey, we want to be in it. I mean, they've been trying it for a while. Of course, Andretti is got an IndyCar team. Uh, I believe they do other racing. I think it's the... Might be like the off-road extreme e-racing. I think they might do that. I don't know why that's something that pops my mind when I think of Andretti. But IndyCar is obviously their main thing. Uh, there's been rumors of them potentially having a NASCAR team. Uh, potentially with Spire having the Gainbridge sponsorship, which is big for uh, Andretti's IndyCar team. So there's been that connection uh, with them having sponsorship on at least two of those cars. Uh, coming up in 2024 and obviously getting on Corey LaJoy's car. A little bit in 2023 so there's that connection already to you know them jumping into potentially nascar and expanding their teams so f1's obviously a logical choice as well um why would you not want to be in the two biggest racing series in the world so for Andretti, they put a lot into f1 though it's been their main focus um between that of course Andretti's is a really big name in racing in america uh one of the biggest names you can think of for racing in America is Andretti. So that's, you know, that's one of the things. A lot of people want Andretti in F1. And when you think of teams joining F1, I can't think of a better candidate. Um, and I think that a team like Andretti, if your goal, which F1's clearly gone all in on the goal of pushing teams are pushing f1 in america why would you not want to have another team from america and one is going to take it seriously clearly haas isn't taking it seriously by the way that jane haas made decisions recently um of his team principal replacement and basically said nah we don't need to add more money to the team we're in a good spot when they are running in ninth or tenth every year in the championship Sure, they can get into, you know, qualifying in, in Q3, but they're not doing anything. They're not improving as a team. They haven't improved as a team. They've gotten worse since they've joined F1. And I think a team like Andretti, they're serious about it. Uh, the article came out the other day about them putting in, you know, the, the work into hiring different people, setting up their base both in the UK and having their base here in America. And you have people they've hired from Red Bull, from Mercedes, from Ferrari, from McLaren, all the top teams in F1. They've brought people over from. You know, they have a car, at least some form, in a wind tunnel, right? They brought in GM. You know, you have Cadillac. GM, as an engine manufacturer, would join F1. So you could have GM and you could have Ford, which is going to be teaming up with Red Bull. In 2026. You could have Ford and GM. Both in F1. You could have Andretti. Have an American team that actually takes it seriously. And you know. They're continuing with the expansion of these tracks. I mean you have. Uh, Saudi of the Americas. Which they've had since 2012. You've had Miami since 2022 now. And you had Las Vegas. Which started in 2023. And of course they've been looking at adding other tracks. They recently. Um filed for the copyrights or whatever for Chicago, Chicago Grand Prix, anything Chicago related for F1, they have applied for, you know, that. So there was clearly interest in Chicago. I guess they had some rumors of Detroit as well. Clearly, they're interested in expanding in America more. So if you're interested in expanding in America, again, looking at potentially a fourth race, I don't know how far they are down the lines of that. Of course, there's always talks of New York. 
why would you not want to have an American team, which could potentially bring over, you know, another driver? I mean, Colton Hurd has been rumored for a while. Uh, Alpha Tari was interested before in getting him uh, before the next freeze for 2023. So, I mean, clearly, something doesn't make sense here. So, you know, they say a lot of it's the money, right? F1's like, oh, it's going to dilute the money, and all the teams are like, going to dilute the money. But the main thing is the Concord Agreement goes to 2025. All right. Concord Agreement is right now saying if a new team wants to join, it's $200 million, right? And they don't want to have other teams join, especially the current 10 teams. They have to keep it the way it is, right? Make it a little harder for someone to join in, get them a little bit more money. So if you wait till the Concord Agreement ends, all the teams do a new agreement. What's that going to put you at? You can increase that money. You could say it's five hundred million. You can make it exclusive, make it exclusive club that nobody can join. And that's just so unfortunate to see F one go in that route where it's not. You want to join? You want to race? Right? You want to be here? Come join. It's very much. You have to be selected as part of these teams. And if you're not, that's too bad, and you're out. Right? So. I don't know. I think that it's unfortunate to see the root of saying, no, you're not in F1 because we want more money. That's essentially it. It's all about money for F1. And it's just, it's annoying to see F1 want to have all this stuff to push more for racing in America, getting more fans in America. And then when you have an American team with a name like Andretti, you say, no, I'm good. I'm good. GM wants to make the engines have Cadillac on the car. No, I'm good. I'm good. What? It just doesn't make sense to me. When I seen that this morning, uh, I was, I was disappointed. Uh, You know, I mean, I I personally, myself, I'm not going to say I would root for Andretti as my favorite team because my favorite team is Red Bull, and that's just how that's going to be. I wouldn't switch teams. I don't think that's something that I would do. But there'd be a part of me that would want to see Andretti do, do well and get podiums and get wins, right? I, I'd be lying if I said I don't want to see an American team win and get podiums in some way right i do i want to see that success right i mean why would you not want that in some form you know again red bull my my favorite team always but there'd be a part of me that if andretti's on a podium or winning a race it'd be cool it'd be awesome to see um you know see the driver up there and have the u.s anthem playing that'd be cool That'd be so awesome. And to see a serious bid shut down for, you know, whatever reasons. I mean, I got part of the article pulled up here. Um, one of the drawbacks of the bid would be using an engine from an existing supplier like Alpine until General Motors could build its power unit. I mean, bruh. I don't think that that's necessarily the most valid argument when you look at 2026 is new engines if you approve them now they'll make a new engine for 2026 right if you say gm and dreading you're in 2026 everyone's making new engines red bull and ford they're new audi that's new Honda, they jumped back in after taking some time off for whatever reason. <laughs> um, but Honda, they're kind of doing something new because they kind of shut down their program. And again, Ferrari has to make a new engine. Mercedes has to make a new engine. Renault has to make a new engine. Everybody's making new engines. So it's the most level playing field to introduce a new team. 
right? If you say you have to come in later, you get a spot where Honda was in 2015, where they came in later than Mercedes, Ferrari, and Renault were into that rule set, right? They were in that rule in 2020 or 2014. So, you know, you look at how Honda did 2015, really to 2018 before they joined Red Bull. Or we'll say 2017, because they got, they were decent with uh, Toro Rosso in 2018. Like, before that, that span, they weren't good. So you put a team behind, it's going to make it harder than if you say you're all coming at the same time. Because Audi's, again, Audi and Red Bull with Ford are starting brand new. They don't have any information, really, on F1 engines compared to the other teams. So GM would be in the same boat. Why not put them in now? Why say, oh, we're going to wait to 2028, potentially, to let you in? What? Um, F1's also said a novice constructor in partnership with a new entrant PU supplier. A significant challenge to overcome. That working with Jim from the outset would have enhanced his credibility. <laughs> Bruh. That's such a stupid and, quite frankly, invalid argument. Had you been with GM at the start, it would have looked better. Instead of adding a partner later on? What? <laughs> That's essentially what they're saying. Is, you joined how to deal with Renault, and then we said, ah, we're kind of good, so you went back and got GM. One of the major car manufacturers in the world to join your team and join as a list of engine suppliers for F1 in 2026 if they were approved. And you said, nah, you should have been with them right from the start. Come on. It's not like other teams aren't customer teams. McLaren gets Mercedes engines. Aston Martin gets Mercedes engines. Williams gets Mercedes engines. Whatever Sauber is now, stake, kick, F1 team. They get engines from Ferrari. Haas gets engines from Ferrari. Red Bull gives their engines to whatever that other team's called. Visa Cash App RB it has the same Red Bull Honda engine. So half the half the grid is getting engines from other teams. So what if that's how Andretti was going to start and then they changed their mind? You said knock on with something better than they did. Bruh, come on. Um, Andretti said it would be F1 noted. Andretti would face a challenge of building cars for two different sets of regulations. 2025 and 2026. And it's reliance on a customer engine ahead of GM's entry. Lead to struggles working with another partner. On this basis, we don't believe that the applicant would be competitive participant. <laughs> okay. few things to unpack there. I think that you don't allow Andretti in in 2025. I mean, how long does it take GM to get an engine set up? I don't think they're saying GM won't be ready until 2028, right? I think it's one of those things of saying GM could be ready in 26, maybe 27, right? So what if they're using an Alpine engine for a year or a Renault engine, whatever you want to say? I don't think letting them in in 2025 makes sense because... This rule set of cars only goes until 2025. So you have this year, which is obviously out of the question, and then next year. So you say you can be in in 2026, okay? You wait until whenever teams are able to start designing that car fully, whenever those rules are fully finalized, and they go. And if GM isn't ready till 2027, then they have an Alpine engine for a year. Who cares? Come on. I don't... I don't know. And their final part of the statement is, on the basis of the application, as it stands, we do not believe that the applicant has shown that it would add value to the championship. We conclude the applicant's application to participate in the championship would not be successful. I mean, I started this video by explaining how 
Andretti adds value to the championship. Um, again, you have three American races. You want to continue to grow the American fan base. F1 is still on popularity of racing in America, on motorsports in America. Borderline second. Borderline by viewership and all that. Borderline. They're close to IndyCar. They might not even be more popular than NASCAR Xfinity Series, to be honest. Right? In that range, they're not at the top in America. You have NASCAR, obviously the Cup Series. Xfinity Series gets a decent viewership. IndyCar, obviously very popular in its own right. F1, maybe even third or fourth. Like, bruh. The viewer statistics for F1 outside of Miami Grand Prix, U.S. Grand Prix, Monaco Grand Prix. You're not bringing in that many viewers when the data comes out for what's been watched on ESPN, right? Compared to who's watching NASCAR, who's watching IndyCar, who's watching NASCAR Xfinity Series. It's not there. Like, it just hasn't surpassed that in America. And I think passing NASCAR in America is ambitious, but I think that trying to be number two is very doable, right? I think that that, you said you can do, IndyCar hasn't promoted their product well. NASCAR's gotten better at promoting their product, so it's going to be hard to pass that. But I think IndyCar, you can pass IndyCar. You can pass NASCAR Xfinity Series. I think it's doable. And you're not there. And you say it's not going to add value to the championship. Having an American team that's legitimately here try to contend, I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous and honestly one of the dumbest F1 things that I've seen there's a lot of things with F1 that can be obnoxious or frustrating at times and them saying Andretti won't add value and there's another part where they said that Andretti would get more value from F1 than F1 would get from them. I don't remember where that exactly is in this article. Um, but, yeah. It's just... It's just obnoxious. That they, they don't think Andretti will add value to F1 in the same way that F1 add value to Andretti as a team. Bruh. Oh my god. This is absolutely ridiculous. I I can't believe it. When I seen it, when I read that. Unbelievable. Um Alright. Do your thing. Dreddy's not an F one. I I don't know. It's annoying. It's frustrating. Um, we'll see you guys in the next one.